the end of fact cam because I can't get it to work and I'm done with dealing with it. It is also the first of all future shows that are not going to include Christelle. The Correct Views is now and officially me and just me. I'm not going to go into it. That's all the information that you need. Uh, ABCnews.go.com. Judge, Texas may deny birth certificates to illegal immigrants. I'm actually, they're kids. I'm very happy about this, and I'll tell you why. There has somehow become this notion by, and I'll tell you where the notion comes from. It comes from the absolute abuse of the uh, 14th Amendment. This anchor baby idea that if, if for some reason you were, you happen to be manipulative enough to be born into a country that you're not supposed to be in, somehow that means that your children are now miraculously, um, I fixed my mic here, miraculously um, members and civilians and citizens of the country of which you have stolen into. Now, if that makes absolutely no sense to you, that's great. Because let me tell you a little secret. It makes absolutely no sense to me either. It makes no sense to anybody with a thinking part of their brain. But the problem is the extreme lack of uh, people we have that do, in fact, have a thinking part of their brain is what leads this sort of thing to become more of a reality. Listen to this. A federal judge has chosen for now, and hopefully for good, to not enforce the Texas health officials to change their stance in denying birth certificates to illegal families with U.S.-born children, saying that the families raise grave concerns. However... More evidence is needed, according to a ruling issued Thursday, Friday. And I agree. Get the hell out of our country if you are not here legally. Now, I am in favor of making it easier to get into the country. I'm in favor of making it cheaper <clears throat> to get into the country. You know what I'm not in favor of? I'm not in favor of having an entirely manipulated class of people enter the country who are therefore going to lock, step, march in time with the Democratic Party, which has done everything to falsely make the illegals think that they are their friends when they are fact they are just using them for votes and free labor. That <clears throat> is what I'm not in favor of. The U.S. District Judge Robert Pittman in Austin denied an emergency injunction on behalf of immigrant families seeking birth certificates for their children after the Department of State Health Services refused to recognize as valid certain forms of identification. The family's lawyers have asked that the judge intervene, saying that the children's right to health care, travel, and schooling, along with parental rights, are being harmed. Let me, let, me, let me go ahead and put this out there. Maybe the child of an illegal immigrant is not entitled to free health care before the person who is already born in the country gets their health care. The way we have it set up right now is if you are born in America, you have to try to find some way to afford Obamacare, which you can't afford. Believe me, you can't. I know I can't either. You have to find a way to afford Obamacare. Aww. Or you are a criminal and you're going to get fined like $700 on your taxes, like Christelle is going to make sure happens to me at some point. But you can't, by the same token, be an illegal immigrant and in that situation. Because if you're an illegal immigrant, then automatically you are already entitled to everything free which could possibly happen. Now, I have no idea exactly how that is. But that is what they're trying to push here, just to be clear. 
That issue is the acceptance of identification cards known as Marticulus Corsoralis, issued by the Mexican consulate to citizens living and working in the U.S. It goes on that lawyers for the families contend that prior to 2013, they were able to present these documents as well as foreign passports without U.S. visas in them and obtain birth certificates in Texas. The judge said in his ruling that attorneys had not shown that health officials had improperly focused on or excluded these documents. The judge also questioned the integrity of the information behind the consulate identification cards and pass passports. He was saying that a birth certificate is a vital and important document. As such, Texas has a clear interest in protecting access to that document. In other words, I have absolutely no idea where in the world Texas is right now because they are the state that is begging for permission to draw your blood at will as they see fit and they somehow don't find that to be a threat to your Fourth Amendment rights. And yet they're on the right side of things here just because you snuck into the country does not mean that your son their daughter is immediately a citizen he and you needs to go back to the damn country that you came from until you get in legally which again i think should be cheaper the judge was not dismissive of the family's arguments but they were being harmed by being denied their birth certificates for the u.s born citizens in other words he's just questioning questioning the illegitimacy of trying to rape everybody else into this belief that because you snuck into the country you're somehow supposed to stay here and you in fact are not so leave uh shtfplan.com billionaire says commodity returns will be spectacular he says you've suffered through the pain why not hang around for the gain Friends, I, for one, am very, very happy to see this being something that's becoming a reality because I have said for a long, a very long time that what you're seeing here is a, an artificial holding down and taming down of the commodities market. Do you realize that we are paying as much for gold now? as it cost pretty much to bring it out of the ground as I speak here at 10 20 2015 how is it you're only paying what it costs to bring gold out of the ground when historically and this can be proven by looking at any chart really I mean you know, the, the chart could have been made by an idiot it's still going to show you the gold has always made money so how is it that it's been uh, all but losing money recently well listen to this <clears throat> max slavo if you've been paying attention the last few years you have no doubt noticed that commodities are in a serious bear market nowhere is this more notable than in the toronto stock exchange venture index once a haven for booming resource firms, <clears throat> the index has seen an unprecedented 85% decline. But while mainstream pundits, it says, point to the TSX.V <clears throat> and tell us that commodities are dead in the water, billionaire investor, and that would be someone to listen to, and Chief Executive Officer Sprott U.S. Holdings Rick Rule says that this is precisely the time that we should be looking at potential opportunities in resource space. In his latest interview, which you can find at Future Money Trends, Rick Rule shares his forecast for key commodities, including copper, gold, silver, agriculture and water as well as how a global economic slowdown and crash may affect prices moving forward quote this bear market has been the most severe bear market that i remember since the middle of the decade of the 80s <clears throat> the recovery from the bear market the 1992 to 1996 bull market experienced the most dramatic upside that they've ever experienced my suspicion is that the recovery from this bear market will be dramatic too 
if for no other reason than the depth of the base that we're working off of. In other words, if you bought it now, you've got it made. What's he say about copper? Certainly five years from now, these will be the good old days of the copper business because copper assets are going cheap. Water, what's he say about water? <clears throat> Water is a no-brainer, except for the fact that it's very difficult to invest in. That is true. Coal. I think there is more room on the downside in thermal coal and power generation of coal. And I think there is more room for the downside for three reasons. And he lists what they are. Steel. <clears throat> He's seeing steel production bottoming out. Uh, that's due to the Chinese and outsourcing. Uranium, I'm not even going to report on it. If you invest in uranium, then you are not a friend of this show. Tune out. I have nothing to say to you. Platinum. Uh, if you have the materials being priced below the cost of production in platinum, it's ironic to me that the platinum prices fell as a consequence of the Volkswagen scandal because the scandal had to do with understanding emissions from diesel fuel vehicles. In other words, they lied about it, but make sure whatever you do, you buy platinum. Absolutely loves silver. Um, he thinks that his own anticipation on gold is that the world's benchmark investment and savings instrument, which is at a 10-year U.S. Treasury, is much less attractive than people think it is. So, I mean, right there, friends, it's how to get out of the crash that we all know and feel is coming towards us. So we're just going to go ahead and count that as the most instructive six minutes you've ever gotten on air at one time. Let's face it. There is no behind the scenes, Queen, and there is no fact cam. So I got to do it right and do it quick. DailySignal.com. A report shows that Michigan police seized over... $23 million in property and cash last year. Listen to this. Last month, as the Michigan Senate debated a host of reforms to the state's uh, civil asset and forfeiture laws, the Michigan State Police released its asset forfeiture report, the annual publication required by state law that details Michigan's drug-related forfeiture activities. The report aggregates data from 629 local police departments. So what, what is it that I'm actually talking about here? I'm talking about these highlights. 8,558 cases. That would be 80% of all forfeiture cases in the entire state of Michigan were so-called administrative forfeitures, meaning that they never saw the inside of a courtroom. Instead, a law enforcement agency, often the agency that made the initial seizure and who stands to gain financially from it, acts as judge, prosecutor, and jury all in one. The number one forfeiture target, it says, in Michigan is cash. In other words, cops legally stealing your money, at least legally if you happen to be part of the uh, World War II Hitler mindset, which we now have in this country. Michigan law enforcement agencies have seized $11.1 million in cold hard cash last year. That amounts to 79% of the value of all seized assets and property that were forfeited under state law. Cash presents a particularly inviting target, that is, stealing target, for law enforcement agents, that would be cops. Most bills in circulation are tainted with narcotics, that's because people snort coke through their drugs, or through their money, making drug dog alerts. It's a frequent justification, and of course, once the dog smells Coke, they can take your money. Of course, the Coke was uh, never there because of you, but that's okay, because they're going to smell the Coke that somebody else put there before you ever got the money, and they're going to steal your money because that's what happens in America. Uh, conveyance is a vehicle's and vessel, vessels allegedly used to transport drugs or drug proceeds were the second largest category of forfeited item. Uh, stealing 44 vehicles from patrons of the Detroit Contemporary Art Institute's Funk Night because the museum had failed to obtain a liquor license. So they were able to steal 44 vehicles off of artists because they didn't get a liquor license properly. And I would argue that you should not need a liquor license because it is up to each adult 
what they put into their body based on what they put in there, what they want to put in. And the government and the authorities can go to fucking hell. Yes, I said it. And if it offends you, then tune out. 12% of forfeiture funds were used to cover the cost of personal overtime, placing individual members of the law enforcement community directly and personally reliant on their forfeiture. In other words, they weren't going to be able to feed their family unless they stole money from people, which is exactly the situation I was in when I drove cab. Uh, you had to steal from your patrons because Fred Nero charged so much that you couldn't do anything on the up and up or you would starve to death. Meanwhile, it says here, according to the Daily Signal, we have officers buying margarita machines with the money that they have stolen off of you when you have done nothing wrong. <sighs> Friends, you're listening to The Correct View. Sam I.B. DeGangie doing political commentary for the Media Speaks. Make sure that you go to TheMediaSpeaks.com. Look up the work of Kyle Court D. Lake and myself, because when you do, you will find that you'll get some of the best and most cutting-edge reporting that you've ever seen, and you'll have it given to you right here, right now. Boom, Media Speaks. Make sure you go there, look up our work. You'll really like it. Also, if you could, look up the work of Mike McLaughlin, M-A-C-L-A-U-G-H-L-I-N. You can find him at Facebook.com. He writes fiction. He writes poetry. He writes political rantings, and he's one of the most talented people on the Internet today. So make sure you look him up. Uh, Facebook.com, uh, Mike McLaughlin. Listen to this. David Peldich, uh, stem cell op gives millions hope of cure for blindness. And this is where I am about to anger a whole lot of ultra-dogmatic pro-life people because I don't think that you should be allowed to harvest baby cells for no reason whatsoever. However, if someone is going to have an abortion anyway, whether you like it or don't like it, there are things that can be learned from embryonic stem cell research that can help the people who were not aborted, who are already alive. And I personally, if I ever go blind, would like to think that there's some hope for me being able to see again. Now, if I have to do that due to babies that were killed, I don't want to do so. However, if the babies were going to be killed anyway, then I kindly would like to have them not die in vain, and I would like to have my eyesight back. If that makes me a terrible person, then sign me up for the terrible person category of the year. I really don't care. I just want to be able to see if I'm in that situation. The 60-year-old woman who had severely impaired sight and was in danger of going blind is said to have had no complications so far following a three-hour operation last month. The surgical team hopes to determine how successful the treatment is by early December. The woman has asked to remain anonymous. The scientists behind the pioneering procedure hope it will dramatically transform lives, allowing the blind to recognize faces of loved ones again and regain the ability to carry out everyday tasks, such as reading, get this, and even driving. I'm absolutely in favor of this. Professor Linden Da Cruz carried out the stem cell operation at Moorfields Eye Hospital in London. Get out, London. The procedure is that can be transplanted into the eye. Stem cell research doesn't lead to anything. Um, I'm afraid that it does. It leads to the blind seeing, as a matter of fact. Experts hope to be able to reverse vision loss in people with age-regulated macular degeneration that affects a quarter, that's one in four for you Usher fans, of over 60s and more than half of the people in the over 75s. Friends, what else can be said? Don't tell me you're not going to get anything from stem cell. You know what? I'm not in favor of aborted babies, but I'm also not in favor of blindness. I, I'm a libertarian. I'm not an idiot. 
So, I mean, we need to look at both sides of it. And if that pisses you off, welcome to the correct views. We have two dumdy, dumdy, dumdies of the day. Mikhail Thalen, Infowars. I love Mikhail Thalen. He always gives me some dumdies. Listen to this. A U.S. high school student has reportedly hacked the personal AOL account of CIA Director John Brennan, uncovering a wide array of private data. Let me pause here because we have two dumbasses in one story. First of all, we have this student that somehow thinks he could hack the CIA director and get away with it. Second of all, the John Brennan, the director of the CIA, who gets the ultra big dumb D of the day, is sending out private information over America online. You got mail. Remember that like 15 years ago? According to the hacker who goes by the twiddle handle uh, flax, everything is everything from a 47 page application for top secret security clearance, which he sent over AOL, the ever secure AOL, to details of the agency's harsh interrogation techniques were discovered in the breach, according to the New York Post. Let me tell you something. About 14, 15 years ago, AOL, and I, I dealt with them in this regard, would give you free service and then attempt to charge you for it. They were that kind of like crooked, hacking, backwards, conniving, dishonest company. And John Brennan is trying to figure out how he got hacked by a high school student when he's using it. Speaking with InfoWars over encrypted communications, which I would be in favor of, the CWA, which stands for Crackers with Attitude, it's a hacking group, uh, they said he was a loser and they hope the person dies that did it. I, I think it's great. Um, I think it's awesome. I don't care what CWA thinks. They can go to hell if they don't agree with me. Point is, I think it's awesome. Um, after threatening to release information from the hack, CWA posted a spreadsheet online Monday that appears to include the social security number and private email addresses of multiple high-level government employees, including Brennan. That's what you get for being an absolute idiot, Brennan. And if you go to jail for hacking the CIA deputy, that's what you get for being an idiot. And that, friends, brings us to the dumdy of the day. Oh. oh, yeah, there it is. You hear it. The dumdy of the day. School bans offensive America Day celebration. Now, let me tell you what. Let, let's go into the imaginary zone here. Suddenly, America is overrun. Multiple nuclear meltdowns happen in our country, which I believe could happen. Look up any Fukushima update, and I'll prove it to you. It's on my site. Massive Fukushima update. Easy search. Um, and I need to go to Mexico. I got to get out of America. We're being poisoned. I got to get out. When I go to Mexico, just off the top of my head, I might want to have respect for the Catholic religion, even though I'm not Catholic. I might want to learn to speak Spanish because I'm in their country and I do not expect them to kiss my ass and learn American. I might want to do certain things that would imply that I am becoming part of the Mexican population, right? I mean, that's just common sense to me. Well, not to everyone. It seems that if you're in America, quite possibly illegally, you should be allowed to dictate how the country runs and how they celebrate their own holidays. And if they don't like your point of view, then all of America should shut up because you are here. Listen to this. School administrators in Wyoming announced the cancellation of a 2015 America Day celebration last week after the event was deemed offensive 
and unsafe. According to Jackson Hole News and Guide, the homecoming tradition was banned after Jackson Hole High School Activities Director Mike Hansen alleged that multiple students could have felt targeted and singled out. Well, doesn't it just suck to be them? They can go back to the country of origin. Says many different students could have felt singled out, Hansen said. Maybe they moved here last week. Maybe they moved here last month. Good. If they don't like it, then they can get the hell out. I'm glad they stayed less than a month. Who's with me? Local news speculated that the decision may have been linked to the school's large Latino population, although no specifics were given by administrators. Says we're trying to balance many different things here. No, how about this? How about if you are in America, you can shut your freaking mouth and be American. And if you don't like it, then you can go back to whatever hellhole you've come from. And I guarantee when all the nuclear plants melt down here and I have to move to Mexico, that I will try to have a little bit more respect for their culture than their citizens had for us when they needed us. Friends, you're listening to The Correct View. Sam, I beat again you signing off, do me a favor. Go to TheMediaSpeaks.com, look up the work of Kyle Court, D-Like, and myself. We are posting facts all the time, nothing but facts, and you're going to want to find out about them. Also, if you want to donate to this show, you can do so at the correct views on Hotmail.com. Every penny you give to me goes towards a better show. Friends, thank you for listening. Good night. God bless.